and welcome to the super fun awesome happy time pedal show my name is Gabor and I thought today I'd be looking at something a little bit different so uh, recently I've done a bunch of videos with this sort of stuff uh, this for example is Amplitude 5 I've done videos with guitar rig and STL tones and and a bunch of others uh, software based amp plugins right uh, and something that it seems to come up in the comments every once in a while is that people download uh, the software and they say it sounds horrible and it doesn't sound anything like it sounded in my demo. Now there are multiple reasons of why that could be happening but I think one of the most common reasons is a thing called impedance and that's what I want to look at today. So impedance is a thing that I don't necessarily completely understand myself uh, but there's tons of videos um, about it out there you can you can if you want to get into it more. But I mean, the general gist of it is uh, how much current is being sent through the cable. So uh, audio is current, right? AC current, there's high impedance and there's low impedance. So for example, uh, if you take an electric guitar, pretty much any electric guitar, um, the output that comes out of the pickups uh, is what's called a high impedance output. Uh, so, if you plug a guitar into an audio interface to record directly, what you need is an input that can handle high impedance. Now, interfaces, so let's, let's have a look, right? Hang on, let's put this down. Let's have a look at my interface here. So this is the Audient ID44 interface. And if you watch videos from my place here, this is the interface I use most of the time, or pretty much all the time. Um, it's a great little interface. Uh, you've got four um, XLR inputs in the back and you've got these two DI inputs in the front. Now, the XLR inputs in the back are what's called mic level or low impedance inputs. So a microphone, like for example, you're hearing my voice right now through this Lewitt LCD440 mic that's right in front of me. That's going straight into input one here uh, on the interface. You can kind of see there the green light when I talk. Yeah, there it is. Um, that's a low impedance um, signal that goes in here. It needs to be amplified um, because the microphone itself is very, it's a very quiet sound basically that needs to be amplified. So it goes into this low impedance input. Now a guitar, such an electric guitar, uh, such as this Fano on this MG6, which is lovely, uh, needs a high impedance input. Now this particular interface has these two JFET driven DI um, inputs in the front. So there's uh, one and two. So if I plug it into one, it would override my microphone and you couldn't hear what I was saying. So I'm plugged into number two, right? So if you have something plugged into the back and then you plug into the front, the front overrides what's coming in through the back. Now, usually I have my amps and stuff running through the two notes uh, torpedo, right? And that comes through the patch bay and all that stuff here into input two. But when I do, um, videos with um, amp sims and stuff I plug into the front. Now what I want you to hear is the difference between using a uh, high impedance input in the front and then I'm going to plug into the patch bay which goes into the low impedance input in the back just to hear the difference. So uh, I'm using this is the default setting on Amplitude. Uh, it, this is in the free version as well the default setting and it just sounds like this. I haven't touched anything right? <laughs> Okay, that's what it sounds like plugged into the front here. Now, if I unplug this, right, same cable, and I plug this into here, into the patch bay, so from here it goes via XLR cable into the back now, into the low impedance input or mic level input in the back here. And this is without touching anything. Everything is exactly the same. This is what it sounds like. massive difference. Now what I can do is I can compensate that a little bit by turning up the gain, the input gain uh, on the interface. Now that doesn't necessarily sound bad, but it sounds very different to the input in the front. It's uh, quite sort of low, woofy, um, and it sounds to me that there's less dynamic state. It's, it's just a more smaller sort of sound, right? So if we listen to this. Now I've got to turn it down again because otherwise it'd be ridiculously loud. And so unplug it. I don't do anything other than the gain stage, right? This, it's a completely different sound. 
And if I turn that up, I would just overdrive it. So it's just hitting the amp sim hard and it's sort of uh, clipping it. Um, but I mean, that's a massive different sound. So let's do this one more time, right? So just go. Versus. Very different sound, right? So that's impedance. So some interfaces may not have uh, uh, an instrument level or high impedance uh, input. Uh, now, what can you do about that, you may ask? Well, one of the things you can do, for example, is get something like this, uh, which is a DI box. So uh, this, I should mention, this video is in no way, shape or form sponsored by Radial or Audient or Amplitude or anything. This is just a video I wanted to do because I had a few comments about that. So there's no sponsoring. This is actually an, uh, a, a DI I bought, I don't know, 10 years ago, and it's been on my acoustic board for years. And it's a killer, killer product. Radial, and again, not sponsored, make killer products. So one of the things you can, for example, do is use this. So if you look at this uh, here, I don't know if you can sort of read it. Uh, let's see if the autofocus works. But here, so you plug into the input here, and then this says it's a low Z output. So what the what the DI actually does is it takes your high impedance sound signal and converts it to a low impedance output. Now, if I take this, let's just stick it there, and I take the other end of the uh, mic cable, and I unplug this in the back, and I plug that into here now. So this is now, it's exactly the same again. All I'm doing is I'm going into this Hang on, let's put it here. Oh, there you go, there you can see it. And now I'm gonna take that same green cable and I'm gonna plug into the input in the front of the DI. So now I'm going from the guitar into the DI, into the, um, the mic level or low impedance input in the back. Let's see what that sounds like. Here we go. So it's quieter, but it's not as woofy. It has that same brightness and the same sort of harmonic content. So I had to compensate by turning the input gain on the on the, the mic pre on the interface up a little bit. But it's much closer to the sound we heard in the front here. I mean, if you compare, uh, it was a, quite a woofy sound going into the low impedance input, but using the DI now, you get that sort of more harmonically rich kind of sound uh, back. So that sounds much more like it. So if you compare it again, so now I'll unplug this again and I, I plug straight into the front. I've got to turn it down there because it's going to be loud. So this is now just going straight into the interface again. It's a slightly different sound because it's a different type of DI, right? But it's basically... It's quite similar, you know, in, in just generally the way it sounds, it's quite similar. Compared to, okay, let's do this again, just quickly, one more time. I'll unplug the DI now, let's get rid of the DI. And now let's plug the cable that's coming from the patch bay in again. Uh, just in comparison again, so this is now, let's put it back to roughly where it was that was about there with the DI. So if I now go without the DI, just straight into the back of that low impedance input. Very different sound, right? It has that woofiness. I tried and I'm going to not EQ it in any way, shape or form. What you hear is going to be completely dry signal, just so you can hear the difference. It doesn't necessarily sound worse, it just sounds different. That's all I'm getting at. Now, so that's that's basically impedance, right? So it's using different impedance to get your signal into um, your computer. Now, the other thing as well is this particular guitar has extremely high output pickups, right? Uh, so what can happen is, for example, if I, again, I'm not changing, let's plug into the front again, 
Let's just, just hear this sound one more time, right? Right, now if I try the same thing, but instead of using a guitar with really high output pickups, I'm gonna use a guitar with very low output pickups. Uh, I'm gonna use this uh, Fernandez, uh, 1979 Fernandez uh, T-style guitar uh, with some very low output Porter, um, I think they're called Porter Vintage T pickups, Vintage T as in Vintage Tele, uh, which are quite low output. Uh, and again, same sound. I haven't touched anything on the software yet, right? It's an almost clean sound, like, even if I dig in really hard. It's quite a clean sound and bright because it's a telly. But um, what you can also do is, for example, in the software, uh, you have down the bottom here, you have input gain and you have output gain. Now I actually turned the output gain down a little bit before I started because um, it was quite loud, right? And it was it was peaking uh, the channel in Logic. But what you can do is, for example, with this, is you can, to make it, to get a more distorted sound back, you can compensate by turning the input gain up. So you get that more distorted sound again because you crank the input gain. You can also crank the input gain, the the uh, the gain on your interface because you've got a lower output and very noisy um, guitar. So there's just different ways of changing the sound quite drastically, uh, and I hope that kind of made sense. That's just something I quickly wanted to go through. So uh, if you have higher output pickups and it distorts your um, the, the, the amp sim too much, turn down the um, the gain, the preamp gain, the mic pre gain on the interface, turn down the input on there, and what will actually happen is, you know, if I turn all this stuff down, it's actually gonna be quite a clean sound. Without touching the actual amp, right, the amp sim, but by turning that up, I get more driven sound. I hope that sort of made sense, and I hope that that maybe helped in a certain way. So, um, make sure when you're using uh, amp sims of any kind, uh, check the impedance. Check, um, make sure you have on your DI. Uh, sorry, on your interface, make sure you have a, maybe a DI input or you have an instrument level input or you have a high Z input. There's all different things. Sometimes you have a little switch as well where you can switch it on. You can switch between um, mic level and instrument level. Some interfaces like this one, for example, in the back actually has a combo jack. So you have an XLR, but you can also plug a phono, a phono jack in the middle, like a quarter inch. Uh, and if you plug a quarter inch in, it actually automatically goes to instrument level as opposed to... Uh, mic level which compensates volumes and stuff like that and impedances so impedance uh, quite important if you're using this sort of stuff I hope this was helpful in some way if you have any other questions leave them in the comments below if you like what we do please subscribe to the channel uh, give us a thumbs up uh, share the video um, if you can uh, the more people watch it the more the more of this stuff we can do, you know, and the more access we have to things and all that sort of stuff. So thank you so much for watching one more time uh, and uh, see you next time.